Welcome to another edition of the Five Star Zone Big Ten Media Day Edition. My man Evan Jenkins joining me. Rico Beard, thanks for liking and subscribing. Evan, wh where do you want to start with this first, man? Because there's a lot going on with the Big Ten. Northwestern had to, uh, I mean, Talk that's feeling weird. bad for a guy. That interim coach had to go up there. I felt bad for that guy. The players decided they were not going to speak, which I understand. That, that situation is just getting weirder and weirder. And it kind of juxtaposed about what's going on with, like, Minnesota and P.J. Fleck. Well, did you see the the A.D. about this book he wrote when he was, like, the A.D. of Baylor, I believe it was? No. I'm just paraphrasing, so I'm going to be a little wrong. But he basically said how, like, he was writing disparaging comments about women and how they were distracting to men. And how, like I said, I'm paraphrasing, but now that's come into light too. And it's for, like, that oh what Fleck did or no, the AD for their oh. Northwestern's current <clears throat> AD. And so they're trying to dig up anything and everything on everybody that's involved. And we've seen it here locally when there's a mess. Oh they yeah. Go after everybody. Oh yeah. They, yeah, they went after Izzo because of everything that Larry Nasser did. Mm -hmm. And it's like, Guys, I met him once. Listen, they're they're horrible situations. If you think hazing doesn't go on in every football locker room in some sort, you're, some you're so, misguided. Okay, there's a difference between – okay, when I look at – the Minnesota thing is just weird. Okay? Yeah, so what exactly I, – I heard – It sounds like P.J. Fleck would come and say, you know, he would ask you questions like, how was your day or how are you and you're supposed to say excellent or whatever or something. There's a – I would apply. And when he walks into the room, you, you need, need to, to get you got to clap. You got to stand like up and that, clap. Though. I was like, that's weird. It's weird, but it's him. Or, you know, you can earn you know, fleck coins by going to visit hospitals that's or, you know, serving poor people or doing whatever. So if you get in trouble, hey, I got a couple coins. Can I buy my way out of this? Okay. But isn't that kind of similar to even here locally in Michigan when Jim Harbaugh is climbing trees and wearing cleats in the house? All, we would, all Michigan fan would say, well, that's just Jim Harbaugh. Okay. We, that's weird. It is. Weird. That's weird. What Northwestern is doing, the naked car. Like, why is everything at Northwestern naked, well, first of all? Okay. So think about the movies in the 80s. Funny pranks always had to do with nudity some way or another. Go look at old school. The biggest famous scene is Frank the Tank streaking through the... Right. And to people that grew up in, in my generation, I'm 40, nudity was funny, right? Today has changed. Evan, let me be honest with you. I probably would hit the portal if they're like, hey, freshman, you screwed up. Okay. I expect you're out drinking late or you're late for practice. Man, you got to run the stairs at 6 a.m. I've heard stories about that from multiple people. Heck, walking the stairs of the big house one time, I was like, I would never do anything at Michigan. Oh, to do wrong to have to do that right, as a like, punishment? Okay, no. I, that's you, you screwed up. That's that's punishment. That's not hazing. And I think people have gotten to the point where, oh, well, you made them do something extra. Well, yeah, you screwed up. Yeah, like whatever but, happened. To yeah, I, I gotta go through a locker room while a bunch of naked. Like, why is I'm like, why is everybody in the building naked? And also, what happens if you refuse? What were they gonna do? Kick your ass? Yeah. So, and then how do you explain that when you know your freshman running back shows up with two black eyes? Right. Uh, so, yeah, they kicked my ass because I didn't want to get naked and do cartwheels. Right. I didn't want to rub up against them because they were naked and I was naked. And, and coach, I'm just not built that way. And you know what sucks the most about it and we see this all the time, is that the players today are the ones that are going to have to end up hurting because of what happened before them. Absolutely. And that's not fair to those guys. They didn't sign up to go to Northwestern to have all of this happen because of what happened before they ever stepped foot on campus. It's wild to no, me. Absolutely. Um, the other big story that came out, Jim Harbaugh is negotiating his deal with the NCAA. How do you get to negotiate a deal with the NCAA? That's only a Michigan thing. I've, ne I've never heard this. It, to me, it sounds as if they want Harbaugh to say, you lie, and we'll give you four games. Harbaugh doesn't want to admit that he lied. He misremembered. It's semantics with him. It really is. It always is semantics with him. And miss me with the whole, I can't believe it's about a cheeseburger. Anybody who thinks it's about a cheeseburger, you're an idiot, and I can't help you, okay? You probably just started using sharp scissors in your first time in your life. And also, you really think that this was about a cheeseburger. Even if it was, right? In our whole lives of liking collegiate sports, what is the one thing coaches couldn't do? 
pay for recruits anything. Right. Or if so, it's almost like your parents. If they're asking you a specific question, they already know the answer. 100% they do. Here's your chance to come clean. Punishments less. Evan, did you break that? No. I'm going to ask you again, Evan. Did you break that? Okay, I did. Thank you. Yeah, it's essentially what I do with my dog when if it pees on the carpet. I'm like, come here. I know you did it, right. but I'm going to make sure you know you did it. Right. You know you did it. And they came to him. So the the initial, it was level two things that they went after Michigan for. It was for uh, meeting with two recruits during a dead period. It was um, coaches watching players via Zoom practice, which you could not do. These are minor infractions. I get that. It's still rules. You can't do it. You can't drive 75 in a 70. You technically can get a ticket. It's oh, yeah. minor, but you're breaking the rules. But it ain't major. You don't go to jail over that. Texting a recruit during the dead period and having analysts perform uh, as a coach on the field which with can. duties, which you cannot do. You notice what I didn't say? You didn't buy somebody some freaking cheeseburgers. But that's just small, myopic thinking by a fan base that just can't admit your coach screwed up. Coach, we're going to give you. And it's the NCAA. NCAA does not want to come down on Michigan. They gave him ample opportunity. He says no. You know, your AD and everybody else was like, yeah, this is what happened. Whoa, whoa, whoa. We asked him. He said no, he didn't. So now, Jim and with Sharon Moore, uh, Mike McDonald Mike has, McDonald the, no has show, show cause. He's in the NFL, which means basically he's never going to come back and coach college again. Not that and he the, was. And the tight ends coach as well. Uh, Grant game, Newsome. You're going to win these games. In the grand scheme of things, it's not going to hurt you. You're going to go 4-0. and You're not going to lose the Bowling Green. You're not going to lose to East Carolina. You're not going to lose to Rutgers. You're not going to lose to Ooh, UNLV. Yes. Yeah. You're not losing those games. He can coach all the way up to the week. He can't be there for the game. He's got to leave. It's business as usual, okay? Here's what you can't do. Can't sit here and say, the SEC's dirty and they cheat. Can't sit here and talk about Ohio State. Whoa. Can't talk about everybody else because now you've been busted. And as I use the analogy, you could be a person who cheats on your wife ever since you've been married. And you could be a person that cheated on your wife once. Guess what you both are now? Still that cheater. You're a cheater. And it do, it just doesn't help his cause when he was all holier than now, when he went on, well, it was John U. Bacon's book, and he said it's hard to beat the cheaters. Right. Uh, Can't do that when anymore. he came in to Michigan and said, I respect the rules. You don't? So I mean, this is what I'm saying. It's, and, and then when you hear people go on, Desmond talking about, oh, this is whatever, like <laughs> – you played me something which just made me feel stupid from a Michigan alum. I'm not even going to say his name, but I felt dumber listening to this. And then you, yeah, it is, you screwed up. And yes, you can no longer say you're better than everybody. And that's all it really is. No one, no other fan base cares. You care because you want people to say, no, no, this doesn't count. This, give me a mulligan. No, you don't get that. Okay. Well, now you're, you're just, you're in the same boat as Tennessee and Kansas Missouri and Missouri and, and LSU and name SEC school and, oh, Ohio State. And, you know, remember the big deal you made about the whole Urban gold Meyer. pants and, or Urban Meyer? Yeah, you can't do that anymore. Not at all. And those guys also lost their jobs yeah. because of all of that situation. And, and I think everybody can agree on, yes, we all don't like the NCAA, whether you wear a Michigan State shirt, you wear blue, you wear green whatever the hell it might be. But guess what? That's everyday life. I'm pretty sure in your office, everybody doesn't like your boss. But guess what? You still have to respect them. Right. And you still have to obey by what they want you to do, right. right? You might not like everything that your boss comes and asks you to do. I can I can say right. that. I don't like everything I'm asked to do. But guess what? If I want to get paid, I have to do. do these things that right. I don't like all the time. And here's the thing. And going back to the, if you're on the freeway driving 75 and everybody else is driving 75 and the cop pulls you over, well, why are you singling me out? Yeah, because you were 75. Yeah, and also well, you, so was everybody else. Didn't pull them over. I pulled you. And that's how you make it worse, too, by trying yeah. to make excuses. I think the NCAA was flat out with them, and they said, listen, just come clean with us. Yeah. Nothing happens. Yeah. But this guy was so indignant on not having anything against him for whatever reason, because they're not big violations. It's the same thing as when Rich Rod lost practices for 
practicing too much. Right. And it's like, we're not going to blame you. It's the same thing that like, if you were just honest with me, we could have overlooked it, but you weren't. And this really, I mean, when you look at it and I'll give him, cr- here's the thing. If you're a Michigan fan, you embrace this. This is a badge of honor because you yeah. want to be like the big boys. The big boys just do stuff and don't give a damn what you have to say no, about it. No, you do it and ask for forgiveness later. You don't even ask for forgiveness. You say, yeah, I did it. You caught me. And what? Yeah, well, what happened to Michigan? Because I mean, because you look, I mean, look at the high and mighty going back just the last year. You let Mozzie Smith play. You knew. You, you literally picked him up from the jail. Remember when they made the whole thing about the whole Glenn Winston and D'Antonio picked up Glenn Winston mm-hmm. from the jail cell to you the field? You essentially did the same thing. You, yeah, from the jail cell to the tarmac to Indiana. That's what you did in a matter of about four hours. Oh, you, That's what happened. You Running back? You, yeah, your running back had a glitch that he's, we're still waiting to see if he's going to the museum. You, you literally brought in Shimmy Schimbeckler. Mm. And you vouch for this guy. A blatant racist. Only to find out he's a pretty bad dude. He's a racist. You vouch for him. I've known him all my life. Then you should have known he was a racist. Oh, right? I mean, that's what it goes back to. And and you know they messed up when they had to come out and fire him. Right. And well, he, he resigned. Oh, that's it. They gave him the choice to right. resign. Yeah, you don't give a, somebody like that the choice to resign. No, no, no. We're firing you. And let's not forget, we still don't know what happened to your OC. We just know that the feds came in and seized a bunch of stuff. And then you got fired. So there's a lot of stuff going on. My thing is, you're winning. You've gone to -to back-to-back college football playoffs. Don't sit here and cry because your coach is going to miss four games. You're going to win. Embrace it. It's a badge of honor. You're just like everybody else. You're just like the teams that win. Okay? You can't have it both ways, Michigan. And it's like, so Urban Meyer got suspended because he allegedly knew about Zach Smith and what was going on with his wife. He got fired for something that he really had Had nothing nothing to do with. with. And you know what? what? Most men, most people in general, not just men, when it involves somebody else's relationship, what do you usually do? Stay out. Yep. Yeah, that's between. Yeah, especially a, a, a husband and wife. Uh, that's not. It's got to be really bad in order for you to step in there. And this was really bad. And I guess they're like, "Well, you were the you were the boss. You could have stepped in and you could have interceded." And I understood it. It was a bad situation. It was. But he ended up losing his job, and he was God there. Tressel was God. He lied to save some players and didn't want them to get in trouble. No, he even was like, "Suspend me as long as you suspend them." Yeah, but this, I mean, nothing's gonna happen because. He's beating Ohio State. Michigan is not going to fire him because he is – right now he's rolling. You're probably going to beat Ohio State again. You're probably going to win the Big Ten again. And Michigan and their fans and their president, and their athletic director and all, they don't want to get rid of him. He's, he's the golden goose right well, now. And the thing about the amount of money they're bringing in, the exposure they get, I mean, if this was any other school in the nation, Michigan fan would be poking fun. If this was Michigan State, they'd be poking fun. Oh, yeah. If it was Ohio Tough State, cheating. they're poking fun. If it's Iowa, Kirk Ferentz, yeah. get him out of there. So it, it, it's like, Take just your look medicine. yourself in the mirror. Also, I said this with Stoney the other day, that why do you care if somebody doesn't like your team? Yeah. That pisses people off so much that I don't like Michigan. So, But yet at the same time, I have to be honest and say they're a damn good football team. Right. Do I hate every snap they take? Yes, because yeah. that's part of a rivalry. You can respect somebody and not like them. That was me with, back in the day with Brett Favre. Couldn't stand him, but man. But what are you going to say against him? It's like Aaron Rodgers here. You can't. You can hate the dude all you want, but he goes out there and wins. He, he wins it, MVPs. He it, right, he gets it done. So. I don't like Jim Harbaugh. I don't like the Michigan Wolverines, but at the end of the day, I know when Saturday comes around, they're going to win that football game. Am I going to hate watch it? Absolutely. Because right. I want to see them lose. But just know hey, you're winning at all costs. And 100% like it or are. not, that's what you're doing right now. Don't believe me? Just look at last year. At any point, he could have stepped up and said, I'm going to suspend this player. I'm going to suspend this player. I'm going to get, you know, this my OC. You know what? I'm going to have to make you step down. No. I'm going to well, ride this until the wheels come off. I'm going to ride this until people find out about it. And that's what you're doing. And it's okay. So Just embrace it. I've always been curious about this, and you might not be able to give me an answer because nobody has been able to give me an answer on this. So when that whole Mozzie Smith situation was going on, they kept saying, let it play out. Let it play out, right? Mm -hmm. You can't suspend him. It's just, you know, he was charged, whatever. Let it play out. Matt Weiss 
never once did you hear let it play out. It's an ongoing situation. Yeah, no, they were quick to get rid of because him. Matt Weiss is going to get fired anyway. Sure, but that's my point. Why is that different in in a Michigan fan's opinion? Because Evan, I think you're answering your wrong question. I'm hoping this is a rhetorical question because I don't know the difference. Mozzie Smith helps you win. No, I understand and, that. And they felt like you know what Weiss, you don't really call the plays anyway. It's really more of a Sharon Moore type of thing. You're the co-OC. Well, there's a lot of cooks in that kitchen anyway, right. so you're so, right. Yeah, he was probably on the outs and, yeah, we're not going to protect you. You're not one of our guys. And, th and and I've heard this from multiple ex-Michigan players that there's two groups. There's the, you know, the, you're you're one of our guys. and Michigan man. You Yeah, you're a Michigan man or you just played at Michigan. There's two distinct groups. This ain't coming from me. Well, this is coming from multiple former players that said, yeah, you told the line, you're a Michigan man. You don't do everything that they want you to do. You just played at Michigan. Well, look at Hunter Dickinson. I mean, I guarantee you he considers himself a Michigan man. He considers himself. Right. Michigan fan ain't ever going to let that happen. Oh, no, he's done. He's you know dead. what I mean? He's but Fredo. It, it's kind of what you're saying. Now, yes, he did transfer. They'll take him out in the boat. But He's that guy did a lot for you. Right. So it's like, and also, listen, Rico and I, we don't like Michigan. But I'll repeat it again. We do respect you. We do know that you're going to win a lot of football Evan, games. I've, I've said it on the show multiple times. They're, the road to the Big Ten goes through Ann Arbor. You, It used to be Columbus. You want to win the Big Ten. And you stop that. You have to beat Michigan. You punched them right in the face. Plain and simple. You beat Michigan. Any team that beats Michigan this year, you're now the favorite to win the Big Ten. If you can't beat Michigan, you're not winning the Big Ten because there's no back door to Indianapolis. No, this no, ain't, no, this no. ain't the Big Ten West. So that means all it used to be Ohio State. You had to go to – you beat the Buckeyes, and history showed only teams that beat Ohio State made it to Indianapolis. That was Michigan State, and that was Penn State. In both of those years, they beat the Buckeyes. Other than that, Ohio State went. Now it's Michigan. I understand. I get it. You're bringing back uh, JJ. You're bringing back uh, Corm and Edwards. You're bringing back so much. You replenished the, the offensive line through the portal. You did a lot of stuff. You bring you're back the, Roman Wilson, one of your best receivers. You're the so. best team in the Big Ten, but nobody's going to hear that. But they are flat out, and, and it is what it is. But, I mean, now even talking, we, we're talking media day, so I just want, I want to ask you this question because we have talked about this, and it probably made people puke when you brought up moving the Michigan-Ohio State game. Ryan Day was, was asked was about smarty. it, and he said it is something we have to have long discussions about. Jim Harbaugh was asked about it, and he said, I don't care when that game's played. You got to move it, especially when USC and UCLA come to the Big Ten. And it's, okay. The only reason you wouldn't move it is if you don't expect to be one for, or two. For, the, for the smart people, you'll understand what I'm about to say. For the people who still use rounded scissors, you're not understanding this at all. <laughs> If you play the game early and you win, great. Feather in your cap, you're probably on your way to the playoffs. You play this game and you lose. You still have five or six games to get right back into the race. And it's, it's the reason why the SEC won't even allow Georgia and Alabama to play but once every 10 years because they're smart. We want to put the most amount of teams in the – college football playoffs yeah so, so we don't want you guys canceling the other out so if you play for the sec championship game and you're both undefeated the loser's still gonna go because it's on the national stage but if you lose this game and then you see the winner go on the next week and play and the loser has to sit home like ohio state made it last year because other teams didn't because USC. Oh, everybody fell on their flat on their face. Right. That it, they had the perfect day where USC fell flat and TCU ended up winning. So they yeah, got a Kansas spot. Kansas State lost. And... So it was like so many different things had to happen. And they all did. And, and, and it happened and Ohio State got to go and they damn near pulled off one of what would have been the biggest upset. But you want to play this game earlier. And you know what? It was even funnier. If you want to, here's something for you. And once again, if you can open your mind, I heard a caller say this, and I was like, oh, that's actually pretty smart. But what if you move the Ohio State game up, like Texas and Oklahoma, yeah, through the Red River shootout? And it's a big thing. 
And I don't see any of those t- fan bases like, oh, we should be playing this later. No, they love year. it. We okay. look forward to it as our audience. You want to do that? If you're a Michigan fan, how about you play a game that probably won't have anything to do with you going to the Big Ten title or not? Move the state game to the last game. If you need a rivalry game, play yeah, that one last. If you need that. It's play just, that one last. Play Ohio. But it doesn't have to happen. I mean. And, and for God's sake, if you're going to move the game, get away with, from this silly unwritten rule that it has to be at noon. There's plenty of time when Michigan-Ohio State is a game. Dude, if that and thing was at like, 8 o'clock, the ratings would be unbelievable. It's like when you watch Ohio State and Penn State. I love it when it's a night game. Oh, it's awesome. I don't care about either school. But when they those two play a night game, you clear your Saturday out. I'm doing nothing. I'm watching this game. Michigan, Ohio State, when you're both a top five team, in my you know, Bo and Woody are dead. They're not coming back. You're cheapening the product if you're only doing this because this is what those two did. Okay? Life also, evolves. It moves on. Those guys have ran their course. We've both found out from both cases. Probably not the best dudes. Right. So make the most of this. And, yeah, Ryan Day is realizing that when you bring USC and UCLA, they even have done that. They used to play the final game of the year. They don't play the final game of the year anymore. UCLA, USC, and UCLA. They don't. Mm. Now they do that cool thing where both wear the home jerseys. That is cool, but they have the they have the uniforms for that. But it's just listen. We we love college football, and what do we look forward to? We look forward to the eight o'clock game, the right. noon game. When it's over, it sucks. As a as a viewer, it does. And but think about the drama if they play the third game of the year. They both win out, going again into that into the Big Ten title game. And I would even say, you know, you have to play the third game of the year. You, you can give yourself fifth game. Sure. Move it up. Fifth game, which means loser has seven games to make up. And if you finish out the year 11-1, and one, okay. And for either team, that's and a recency, quality loss. And recency bias helps you because all people remember is you lost, but you caught fire and won your last seven. Mm-hmm. Rather than, man, you, you lost – because it could be the exact same score that you lose 42 to 21, but you lost it so early in the year and you you made up for it and your team got better. Or you play the final game, you lose the same score, 42-21. Man, maybe they they weren't as good as we thought that they were. Huh. Same games. You just put them in the box and you jumble them up. And Ryan Day was pretty much correct that, I mean, no, it would have to take a lot for it to happen, but you could literally play that last game of the year, Big Ten title game, and then you guys could go into the playoff again with this expended playoff could do it. and face each other again. So you're telling me you could play each other three times in a row? I wouldn't want to do that, but it's No possible. team would want to do that. No, it's because at that point. It loses the luster for the rivalry history, too, doesn't it? History says if whoever lost the first time wins the second time. Yeah. So you don't want if you got to play a third time. Like the only time I've ever seen that happens was 2000 when State had to play Wisconsin four times that year. And they beat them all four. But by the final game, it it literally looked like a football. Halftime was 19-17 at halftime in the final four. I remember it was painful to watch. Speaking of night games, we found out NBC will have the Michigan State-Michigan game. Michigan State is going to be hosting Michigan at night. As long as schedules aren't flexed. I don't think they're going to be flexed because I, I think that Fox – the only way it gets flexed is, I guess, if they move Notre Dame, because I think it has nothing to do with Fox. Fox already has their game. This is NBC can flex it to three thirty. If like I don't know who Notre Dame is playing that day, but if they're like, "Hey, we're going to move Notre Dame to the night game, move you to the three thirty spot," they can do that. But and it will have to do with with records too. I, I'm I sure. can't I can't believe how many people once again. Maybe the sponsor of this show should be Rounded Scissors who only heard what we had to say and like, oh, you guys are threatening Michigan fans. We're not. They don't even play September 21st. Oh, okay. Or, so no, I, it's October 21st. Sorry. October 21st. They don't play October 21st. So I doubt if that game gets flexed. Mm-hmm. I think you just had to put that little asterisk there just say just in case something Correct. happens. But people took what you guys said out of context so bad on the Valenti and Rico show that's two, two to six on 97 won the ticket. You guys were trying to say, this is just me, a guy. But I'm hey. Not, on Thanks your, for the million downloads. Yeah, I'm not on your show. I listen to your show very carefully. There's times where I come in and I talk goofy stuff. But I listen, and I'll be honest. I took a, a minute clip where Mike's saying, here is a, uh, PSA. A, a PSA to Michigan fans. Might not want to go to this game. Right. 
Now, he's not saying, and you were not saying, that a brawl was going to erupt at Spartan Stadium. No. That's not even close to what you guys were saying. What This is me taking out what you guys said, what I believed you were trying to say. Whether it's a Michigan fan or a Spartan fan that walks by a little drunk and says something stupid, if they're saying it to somebody else that's in the same mind frame that they are, something could happen. Pro- problems. That's all that you were saying. Last night, so th- we're recording this on Thursday. And hold on, hold Wednesday on. night at the White Sox game, right. a fight broke out in a suite, Rico. Yeah. That means those people probably knew one another. Right. They are got money. And, and they're White Sox fans. They're right. fans of the same team. But and, they managed to get into a fight. So people saying that fights don't happen at stadiums. Oh, well, you're saying you're, you're in sight. Nobody's no. in sight. Because here's the thing. I can speak for myself for this. 95% of fan bases are rational, can go to a game can sit there and root for different teams. And at the end of the game, you may be a little pissed off, but yeah, you know what? Hey, man, next year. Yeah. Good game. Guess what? See you next year. We didn't play in the game. I'm talking about the 5% for both fan bases who take this personal. And if you don't believe me, yesterday showed you what the 5% looks like. Because only the 5% of each fan base got triggered by this. Mm-hmm. The other 95% pretty much had their popcorn and was like, hey, man, are you reading this stuff? Are you seeing this stuff? When you see people coming out there, and, and thank you for stealing our content and putting it in your in whatever your little weak sauce podcast. Hey, when you have somebody who creates a burner account and has a conversation with herself saying, I got threatened. Oh, wait. Did I forget to take that out? Oh, everybody saw I created that account. I'm busted now. I'm oh, sorry. Well, it was just a, me- a moment of weakness. It was no. a moment of weakness because that Valini just gets under my skin. That person tried to start a riot. That's the person I'm talking about. I'm talking about the face painter. I'm talking about the up in your face, your team sucks person. You are that per. Evan, I came out and said a while ago, I was the one that said, this rivalry should probably take a break for two years. Because what happened last year is kind of showing you it went past just being good fun. And it's like everything else in America. It's now political parties. And it became very personal for a lot of people. And you saw what happened afterwards. And, yeah, you know what? When you were like, okay, when, when, you, when you see your, your season ticket holding district attorney all of a sudden jump in there to, to, to turn the screw in even more to Michigan State. Oh, I'm going to hold off and wait until the year is over. And then I'm just going to quickly dismiss the charges because you could have did that earlier. It or could- the head coach standing up there knowing that his player just got arrested. Right. Saying these guys need to be whatever his quote was. Right. It, it, but he was very matter of fact. Something should happen. Oh, to and then players. the AD, this is just, you know, this shouldn't happen. Oh, well, yeah. His ass decides to show up all of a sudden and talk. Right. But we can't find you talking about anything else. Yeah. And once again. How does Xavier Simpson get your wife's car? Well, and and that's the thing, Rico, is I felt, and yes, I am a Spartan fan, that a lot of this, I'm not saying brushed under the rug, but it wouldn't have been a bigger deal if they didn't stand up on that podium, pounding their fists, saying, this and, is wrong. And that's just it. And it then, it's, it's one of those things, Evan, you know what? We talk about, guys, mistakes were made. MSU, hey. You shouldn't have swung your helmet. You shouldn't have gotten into a fight. You should have been You should have been better. And that's also a choice that they're going to have to live with for their entire right. lives. But then they're vilified. And, yeah, and you're this and you're that. And wait, wait, wait. And then you find out, wait, but your captain, you knew your captain had a gun in his car. Well, well you, you know, had to wait he, for it to. He was taking a, a, a class. He should have known better. I he know. was taking the class. I digress. Anyway, basically saying, if you're. If, if if you're that guy, if you're a triggered person from yesterday, you're the person that we're talking about saying you may want to stay home because you couldn't handle a segment and you were sober. Imagine an eight o'clock kickoff where you're probably going to have some drinks in you. That's what I'm talking about. So, yeah, it just, yeah. It takes it's one not saying had to ruin it for everyone. Right. It's not saying, oh, Michigan State can't handle a night game. Michigan State has tons of night games. Tons. As a matter of fact, some of the biggest ones I remember. Hey, newsflash. I think they have six or seven this year. 
They've played everybody. This is the first time they're playing Michigan at night. It can happen. Nobody's saying, oh, this is a house, a den of horrors like Rieger and Wojo were trying to. It's, no, nobody's saying that. It's saying if you're coming there thinking you're going to start something, chances are you're going to probably be sitting next to the Spartan fan who's won. You're gonna, you can't put two want to fight guys next to each other. No, 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 That's no. where the problems come in. If you're a rational fan, then guess what? This message goes right past well, you. And that's, but if 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 this triggered you enough that you felt the need to write a fake article or come up with fake burner accounts, you're the person we're talking about. Oh, yeah. If you're a Spartan fan and you felt like, oh, well, you're making us all sound that you're the person that we're talking about. Yeah. So if yesterday's show triggered you, because I forgot all about it until I got home and people are sending me stuff like, dude, I logged on this morning and I'm like, Goodness. Like, I saw a few of them when we put it out there Mike yesterday. Valenti's still trending today. Mike's going on vacation. Newsflash. He ain't on Twitter, and he doesn't really give a damn. Oh. Unless Mike Valenti trending is a horse at Saratoga, he doesn't care. And it's like these people that are like, hey, Mike Valenti, I dare you to say that. He is saying it to your face. Right. He's broadcasting it to all of Detroit. If you Evan, have the Odyssey app, all of this country. Evan, I, I'm... I wasn't going to the Michigan. The only reason I went to the Chrysler Michigan game, Michigan Michigan State game at Chrysler is because it was right after the shooting on campus and I wanted to see what was going to happen. Other than that, and it was great. They handled it really, really well. I wasn't going to go. And if those fans from both sides show up, you can have a great game. Win or lose, it's a great game. That's you, all. you let it happen on the court or let it happen on the on the field. But if this game were to be at Michigan, I wouldn't go. And I, I can, I'm i in the press box. And that's just as bad. So, And also, think about what we're dealing with, too. You're you're dealing with, what's the student section hold? Is that 30,000 of the stadium? Yeah. Something like that? So you're dealing with a bunch of 19 to 22-year-old and, and, and kids. And think about it. And you'll always have the one guy who dresses up in the opposing colors to go sit in the student section because it's my God-given right because this mm -hmm. is America. And you it can't is. tell me they're not trying to bait somebody one, into doing but, something. And once Evan C. You, my friend, you can use sharp scissors. You understand. <laughs> well, I've been, uh, listen, I've gone to almost every Spartan home game since 2007. So, yeah, it's that person that. Like, I've why, never seen anything bad happen why, there. Why do you want to, you're asking for trouble. Because now, want to fight Spartan fan is going to see you. And you're want to fight Wolverine fan. And you two are going to end up fighting. And the next thing I know. It's going to be, oh, a brawl broke out at Spartan Stadium, and it makes everybody look bad because then I'm sure you're coaching your AD, and hell, Savage probably going to say, hey, can I come to Ingham County and prosecute these guys? Like, we're just trying to avoid that and say, if you're that guy or you're that woman, stay home. Well, and so a lot of the tweets that you get are from unnamed people, which – is very much expected or burner account but some of these people that are like we're coming to your stadium we're gonna take it over and listen i've been hearing that since 2007 that you're gonna come to spartan stadium and overtake the stadium i've only seen two teams actually do that nebraska and ohio state yeah they've taken the they've literally taken the stadium over where it was ohio ringing throughout four corners of the uh stadium and i it, saw nebraska under nick saban's first game it was a sea of red in there I've yet to see Michigan do it. And, and also, by all means, go do it. But I right. have to, I hate to say it, those tickets are usually taken up by Spartans. And if there's one game they're going to go to a year, yeah. it's that one. Or they'll sell them. But the last time Michigan tried to take over the stadium, it was two years ago. And, well, that didn't end well for them. No, not at all. And it's just, here, here's because what it at comes that point, I think it was about 35% you see the yellow in the stands. And here's what it comes down to. Stop caring what people think about your team. I'm with you, man. It doesn't matter that I don't like your team. It doesn't matter that your buddy at work is an Ohio State fan. Guess what? You can still. And then the, oh, 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 we're all friends. <laughs> we're all friends the next day when it comes to, to Lion games. No, you aren't. Right. I've been to plenty of Lion. Oh, Lion games where they played at the Pontiac Silverdome that was known for what? Fighting. In the stadium, yeah, over and over. What were you see? Oh, we hear loud cheers during the game, but there's nothing going on. Yeah, that's because of fights going on in the right. stands. It's just I hate Twitter fired up, so much, Rico, because people Evan. take what you say out of context. It's oh, a ten God. minute long clip, and you read twenty five words where somebody says I don't condone this. Because here's the thing: 
because you have idiot people who aren't smart enough to come up with their own content. So they have to steal yours, twist it, and then try to become famous off of something that you said instead of just, you know what? Maybe doing the homework, maybe taking a class or two and figuring out how to actually do this the right way. And then people would actually respect you. But you're wondering why you only have 400 followers and why you have to pay for guests to come and sit down at your table when I've yet to ever pay for anybody. Well, and here's the thing, too. Twitter doesn't matter. It doesn't. You're but not yeah. real on there. Right. You can have your little meetups and all that. And I get it. They can... say, and here's the other thing, because people, oh, you see all this stuff? Evan, learned this from Drew Sharp. I can walk into Lions, Locker Room, Pistons, Wings, Michigan, Michigan State. They know who I am. Because if you say something, you got to be man enough to go face the music. You can't just hide behind your words. So No, but that's all they do on anymore. I, when I go to Michigan, I don't care for the fans, but the people behind the scenes, we say, hey, give each other a hug, ask how you're doing. Why? Because they know, they know what I say. But everything that I say, I can back up. Would you like? So should I give you some? No, nah, we no, won't do. I, I, I ain't. You know what? I'm not trying to make anybody famous. I'll just simply. No, I was it. just going to read some unnamed comments on there. But the player, the people that want to say we're going to come to your stadium. Okay, and, you know what? Go buy go a buy ticket. ticket. I don't care. If go you're... buy a ticket. But guess what? You're the person that we said you're one to fight guy or you're one to fight girl. That's that's who you are. The only thing I try to do is avoid conflict, right? Because it's not worth it. Right. It's Unless it's, somebody says something about my wife or my mom. You know what, Evan? I look at it like this. Sometimes you know stuff that the other people don't. And then you may come up and say, hey, what do you know about that girl? Yeah, she's trouble. I wouldn't do this if I were you. Ah, oh, I think I can. I'm telling you. And then two weeks later, they're like, man, you were right. I wish I would have listened to you. You know, now, you know, uh, the test came back positive. I'm stuck. We're just I saying behave dead. yourselves. That's what it comes down to. All right. Let me end up some good. No. You got a question for me? No. All that, right. That's what I think about that whole situation was that burp. I think the black unis are coming from Michigan State. Well, I and I don't. You, I don't think. It's you don't think what, it's the leak? I don't think it's the leak. So tomorrow, which is Friday, 728, right. Michigan State has been putting it on every social media platform possible. I, 728 big eyes. I, I don't think that's the leak. I think those were the kids' jerseys. Which are always a little different than the adults. I don't Correct. think that that's it. And for everybody, well, I don't like the striping. Hey, newsflash, guys. That's been on every jersey that they've worn. Football and basketball and every baseball. They yeah, all that's been going that. on for years now. Yeah, well, I don't like it. You don't like it because they went five and seven. I, I to be honest with you, Mel Tucker could cure cancer, and, and they would be like, you. Well, well, you, well, well, what about diabetes? Huh? Tuck done no diabetes. But and here's the thing with the uniform. They went too. five and seven. They didn't go to a bowl game. I tell Mike all the time, you can't win games in July. Okay, you're just unhappy because they went five and seven. I can't make an excuse for you, but you can't be that miserable if you're a Spartan fan that everything that they do, well, is this going to help us win? Maybe. I don't know. We're going to be playing at Ford Field. Okay, and? Also, I'm pumped about that. Right. I don't have to drive. Okay? That's selfish on my part. But guess what? It's still going to be home field Most advantage. Most of your fan base lives in Detroit, and the stadium, like it or not, Ain't filled the day after Thanksgiving. Like everybody makes it want to. Oh, the Spartan fans showed up. They also, showed up in when they were eleven and two. If that team was, well, yeah, they were eleven and ten and two at that time, or nine and two when they played. Also, go watch a Michigan State game at the Breslin, and then go watch Michigan State basketball when they go to Little Caesars Arena. Yeah. You'll hear the difference. Yeah, it's a different crowd, and it, it it's completely because there's no student section, but it's. It's a packed house, and that's right. what it's probably going to be. The Do you remember when they played FAU there? Yeah. Probably 2008, something like that. The place is, the like place is going to be packed, and uh, anyway. I'm looking forward to college football, but and it's going to be I fun. Think you're gonna get, I, I think you're going to get finally talking. I've been talking with Mel. For, he He's wanted black uniforms for a long time. Well, the only thing that matters, too, is if the kids like it and the people that buy them like it. And then it. you got to win, or else people be like, you can't wear those ever again, but I screw that. Whatever. You know what? If that's the case, wear them early so you can get a win with those uniforms on. Because I like to see those. You know what other ones? And then we'll end this because I know you got stuff to do. If they 
because everybody in the NFL is doing the throwback. If they did the Kelly Green jerseys, mm-hmm. for like, like Chuck one Rogers day. here, yeah, like the the Kelly nineteen eighties and nineties. Yeah, Lowe, like eighty seven. Yeah, the, the, the low white, the, the Kelly Green jerseys, kind of like how the Eagles are throwing, the, you know, with the big bird on the yeah, side. Yeah, the, yeah. Or even the Jets, they're going back to that color too. Yes. but they're wearing the whites. I do have a question. Okay, were you invited this weekend? So. <sighs> this weekend is Spartan Dog Con too. Uh yeah, Spartan Dog Con. I put in a request. I may or may not show up. Okay. So we we'll see. That that's the party, man. I've cleared out my weekend schedule, so it may be one of those, okay, get up here real quick. So Oh, and let one last reminder. Michigan football's good. <laughs> yeah, nobody heard that. <laughs> nobody heard that. Oh, you guys just anyway. Keep watching, liking, subscribing, the five-star zone. We'll be back. Big Ten Media Day is going to be over, and we're going to start getting into lineups and who's going to be where and who's going to win. And and is this Michigan's Big Ten? Oh, and by the way, Colorado's leaving to go back to the Big 12. So there you go. I'm going to ask a real naive question. Where do they play now? Pac-12. There we go. All right. (laughs) For Evan, I'm Rico. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. We'll be back.